Hey guys, this is Richie. This is Chris. And today we're bringing you a new series called Horror Talk, where we talk about horror movies that we've seen, or just horror movies in general. And uh, today we wanted to talk about Hatchet 3. Um, it, they recently put it up on Netflix. I know the movie's about a year old or something like that, but uh, we just got around to seeing it. You saw it a little bit before I did. I watched it a couple of days ago. And um, I actually just asked him like a couple of minutes ago, prior to shooting this video, like what he thought about it. And then he came up with the idea of us just sitting down and talking about it. So I said, hey, why not make some sort of new thing out of this? Definitely. So I guess this will be a reoccurring thing every now and then. So make sure to look forward to it if you're a huge horror movie fan. So anyway, let's get right into it. I had asked you, what did you think of Hatchet 3? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Um, like what I was telling you before is that I think I liked the movie. I loved it actually, but not for its story. I liked it for the killing and the gore and just kind of the art behind the horror in horror films. Mm -hmm. And it had it had that real life kind of terror, but I didn't like the story in the sense of like oh he's indestructible, you know, like that's been done to death, like. I would, what I was telling you is, um, you know, he's kind of like Jason in this in the sense, you know, Jason died many times, but he's come back to life. But this guy is just kind of like super Jason in the yeah. sense that he just kind of like regenerates. he just can't die. Yeah, he literally can't. And um, I mean, I thought it was kind of cool the way he did die. I mean, it's very um, supernaturally, I guess. But um, I, I liked it. I really did like the gory killing like it there was just so many creative kills and i thought that this guy is incredible for his freaking power like he was yeah. just he was just demolishing everybody left and right and um it's you know jason is a, like he brutally kills people like brutally but jason is very stealthy like he's calmer this guy just does not give two shits about nothing and he just attacks at anything and I thought that that was kind of cool and that makes it that much more interesting and that much more dangerous so I mean uh, I liked it though what do you think of it? um definitely I, I can agree with some some stuff that you're saying um with these kind of horror movies and just most horror movies in general you don't go into them for the plot mainly True. because it's more like it's all the same sort of cliched formulaic sort of storylines and everything but um, I feel like this movie, for some reason, it stuck out to me a little bit, just in the sense that, yeah, I mean, granted, you have to watch the first and second movie, because they all lead into each other, and I kind of really enjoy that. Yeah. Whereas, like, sort of, like, the other, like, franchises, like, Halloween, well, not really Halloween, more like Nightmare on Elm Street and uh, Friday the 13th, they kind of, they're uh, different stories, they don't kind of uh, add up all together, whereas Hatchet does. Yeah. And I kind of, you know, commend them for doing that. It's uh, this continuous uh, advancing storyline. And I kind of like the fact that they kind of, they not they kind of, they needed uh, Victor Crowley's father's ashes to or just his father in general to, to kill him because he needed his dad in order for him to die. Granted, it's kind of a little silly, but at the same time, I kind of find it, found it cool because he needed that inner peace, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Because um, I think in the second one, I, I think it was his father who was trying to protect him, and then he accidentally killed him or something like that. Or he set the house on fire. and some Something. I, f I forget what it was. Um, I watched the second one, and the second one I didn't like. It's not that I, I took it serious or anything, because you can't take those movies serious. Yeah, they're very independent. And kind of. Yeah, and they're very silly. They're, they're self-aware of what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, to, like, they're really huge, like those big-time horror fans that are like very into like the over the top gore that's what you're getting with this movie they enjoy it but if you're a casual sort of horror movie uh buff or just a casual movie goer in i think general, we're a little of both yeah i think we're a little of everything but i found the third installment to be the best out of everyone every every of the previous installments um i i haven't seen the first one but i hear the first one is pretty good from you know other horror movie uh I, I'm going to be honest, I only saw Hatchet 3 and, um, you know, I, I wasn't confused, which is uh, yeah, you won't very get, important, yeah. I guess, because it being a third 
film. You would think you'd be lost. Yeah, and, and you know, I kind of wasn't, and I thought that that was kind of cool. The I movie's thought, very self-explanatory. Yeah, and it, and it kind of picks up right away. Yeah. And I thought that that's awesome, too, but like I said, like, the movie is just, you know, you, you, what you said, I mean, you can't take these movies too serious, like, in the sense of the, the, the story, the story line on it is just, like, kind of, like, whatever, I guess, but... Just that this creature, this monster that they created is, is actually kind of cool because, um, like, I would definitely love to see a freaking Victor Crowley versus, a, you know, Jason Bourne. Which we kind of got because um, in, in the movie, the one of the SWAT guys, the bald douchebag, he played uh, Jason Voorhees in a oh, 2009 wow. Friday the 13th reboot. And, by the way, that whole scene was the best scene in the movie. Yeah. The whole scene with the SWAT and everything is that in, cool. is in that the kind of cool. is on the the island or whatever it was. That was cool. Yeah. Just from the moment that they're introduced to like the moment when they all die, just that whole part of the movie, which is pretty much the middle act, yeah, was I, th was the strongest point in the whole movie. I, I that showed it. this guy like as hit a uh, freaking beast, no nonsense like, yeah. sort of guy. Like even though we knew that from the previous movies. But some of the kills are very cool. Um, it, it was I, I really enjoy the Victor Crowley character a yeah. lot. And I, what I enjoyed about it too was that you know it was kind of real in a, in a way because like not real in the sense of like this guy could the die killing and come and back and then like, the killing. Yeah. yeah, I thought what was real about it is that um, this kid was being picked on because he had a disability and deformities. Deformed. Yeah, and he was being picked on and stuff like that, and then. Like, he became this freaking monster because he really wasn't a monster at first. And then they create, like, it's kind of like society created a monster. Society created their own Frankenstein. Yeah. And, and own, I thought that that's, Frankenstein's monster, whatever. Yeah, I thought that that was interesting in, in a way. And again, I thought the movie was, it was, it was definitely cool. Yeah, I definitely think this was the strongest out of the trilogy, in my opinion. Um, Daniel Harris, who's like, the horror movie queen because she was the little girl in the Halloween movies four yeah. and five who grew up to be extremely hot I oh, must say um she's not in this one a whole lot um in the second one she did replace a girl from the first one and she was in the second one quite a lot she had a lot of screen time but in this one she's not so much into in it I mean like she, her character isn't really featured as much Except for in the beginning and sort of the end of the movie. But I found that, you know, um, I found it pretty good because I found the rest of the movie very well, especially the whole middle act. The only thing that I didn't like was the end. Um, I, I did like that they finally did get to kill Victor Crowley, but he freaking like impaled her on the tree branch. Which was kind of cool. Yeah, but, I mean... it was cool, but what the beef that I have with it is that like she got off. Yeah, you know, whatever. But then, like, she just died, and then the movie ended, and the credits true, came up. True, she was just, kind of like, cliche. gasping, and then the helicopter, like, you can hear it in the distance. And then, like, she took one gasp, and then it blacked out, and the credits rolled. I'm like, really? That's it? Yeah. It was, it was, I don't know. But at the same time, like, I guess sort of everyone found their peace. I don't know if you want to call it peace, whatever. In the movie, um, yeah, the, all the characters kind of... Yeah, and I guess it kind of doesn't leave it open either for any more, even though they probably could find some weird, strange way to make a fourth one. The paramedic revived them or something. <laughs> he took his, his rotting skeleton with little bits of flesh on it and re re revived Victor Crowley. <laughs> And made him into a Jason he's, X. He's pretty much the only one who survived, which is kind of Victor X. <laughs> Victor X in space. Oh no! <laughs> Victor X lost in sea. Crowley X. Crowley X. <laughs> lost in sea. Yeah, I don't oh know. Oh my god. That's funny. So it's Resident Evil Revelations. With pretty Victor much. Crowley. Victor Crowley. <laughs> he's a robot. Robot in sea. He looks like Android 16 from Dragon Ball Z. Victor Crowley. <laughs> Yo. Gohan. Yeah. Mary Beth. Yo, that's funny, man. <laughs> Where's Mary Beth? And then no, she comes I'm... back to life. 
<laughs> because they give her an artificial. They give her the heart from Crank. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're going hard now. Oh my goodness. See, but tell me they wouldn't find some ridiculous excuse they to make would. a fourth one. But I kind of like how it. Um, like I, I do have some beef with the ending, but at the same time, like they close it off to kind of make sure, like you know, it doesn't. Yeah, I guess they it. intended for it to be a trilogy. I guess either that or they didn't intend it, but like it just did. It was kind of received well by like big horror movie fans that they kind of had no other choice but to extend it. Yeah, but um, I think it ended. Well, it went out on a good note, I think. What's kind of sad about the whole movie, though, with the whole ending, actually, is that the, there was a paramedic that was, like, a pussy. Like, he's well, just the, the Asian guy? The Asian guy. He just stood in the, yeah, the, man. the boat when he, he would have left. But that, that girl, he I wanted her to die it. so bad because her acting was terrible. Yeah, it was. I mean... What do I do? It's a horror movie. You're going to have horrible acting, but, like, she was just... It, it, I felt like I was watching a YouTube fan film. Like, she was just saying her lines like, Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I am new here. I do not know of this Victor crowd. Like, she was very one-dimensional. She was just yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. blah. Like, killer already. I'm like, surprised it took Victor her that long. Probably. I'm surprised that cop, whose ex-wife was there, died before she did. Yeah, the way his ex-wife died was pretty funny. Yeah, he got she got her head ripped off. He was just like, yeah. and just took it off. Yeah, that was pretty. Funny. Um, then a little poor rookie cop, I think. Yeah, that was so messed up. But he, he ripped his the, arms he off. He got and it the worst. Dug his head into the freaking dirt. He drowned him without <laughs> him being it because he dislocated. He not dislocated. He uh he paralyzed hit, him. Yeah, he hit him in the back. Yeah, he what he do? He threw the knife. The, the something. He, he threw, threw the axe or whatever. Yeah, or oh, yeah, the axe. No, it was a piece of wood on fire. He went, Shoo. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it got stuck on his back. Then he ripped it out. So he got paralyzed. Ripped his arms off. Then he ripped his arms off. And then he stuck his head under the ground with the with mud. The, and, and you see the bubbles. All you see him is drowning. Like, that's so creative. I thought it was cool when those two cops were standing by the shed. And he kind of just comes out the shadows. Yeah. And he just, of course, he yanks the black eye first. And then, like, he took the lady cop. And the cop kind of saved her. But then it was like, nope. And he grabbed her by the mouth and just like... Oh, yeah, he was like, oh! Yeah, just, you could hear him tearing her apart. And, um... Tearing her apart. Yeah, he was hitting those walls. <laughs> with his, uh, ginormous oh, Victor Crowley mutated hands. His... <laughs> and, um... His hills by his hands. <laughs> it's all like this. That's where he came from. It looks like, um... What the heck is that monster from Resident Evil? Which with one? the weird giant long arm. The, oh. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Krauser? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, it could be Krauser. With this Krauser arm. Krauser. <laughs> Krauser heels have eyes, arms. Wait, which, which guy are you um, talking about? Which Resident Evil? I think it's the first one at the end. The one that kills Wesker. Oh, okay. Um, I forget the name of the, the, the monster. But... The the, the tyrant. Yeah, the tyrant. Well, that that, that, that joke is with completely With the fucking over. eye. And, uh, yeah, yeah, there you the go. Oh, no, that's not the tyrant. No. No, wait, it's the tyrant. The tyrant's the blue guy, the tall blue guy. Well, no. No, 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 no. Now no. we're talking about Resident Evil. Yeah. The tyrant, I think is that is the tyrant. But then there's a, a tall guy who wears a coat. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, that's Mr. X. Oh, then that is the yeah, tyrant. Yeah, and he was, he was, like, in... Uh, Operation Raccoon City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, he was in the Damnation movie as well, the CG animated one. Yeah, that's Mr. X. Apparently, okay, like, so there's, like, a freaking awesome fight scene in Damnation. Oh, really? Where, like, Leon fights, like, ten of Mr. X's or something like that. Snake or something like that. Goku? Yeah, yeah he's just, like, Super Saiyan 6. Neo. Neo. Neo? He's in the Matrix. <laughs> Well, he yeah, fights all the oh, yeah, yeah all Androids. the Mr. Uh, Agent Smith clones. Agent Smith. Yeah, yeah Mr. Android. He, he fights Agent X. Um, I haven't seen the movie though. But anyway, um, yeah, um, just got off to a completely random topic. But that's what this is for. Random topics of horror. I suppose, even though it was mainly about Hatchet Three. <coughs> um, if you have a Netflix account, go watch it. It's on Instant Q. Or if you rather do the DVDs or whatever, borrow it. Or even just buy it. Um, it's a fun film. I don't. It's definitely a fun film. It, and you know, it's a Daniel Harris is nice to stare at. Because there's that one scene where, like, they're holding her off, even though she's covered in blood, but she has that nice tattoo on her side, and she has a fat butt. 
I feel kind of weird because I, I just remember her as a little kid in the Halloween movies. But if you think about it, we were little kids. Well, we weren't even born yet. Oh, that's actually very true. Yeah. But when we first when well, we saw her. Yeah, well, our first exposure of her was as a little kid. Her acting was incredible. <laughs> uh, oops, there goes my soda. It's going to explode. Her, her country accent was it, was, so it, it was slipping at times. But so she did she she did a good job for what it's worth, you know, she um I just remember her being so like innocent, like What? <laughs> no Michael Myers is coming after her and everything. No I will always remember that scene where she's stuck in the freaking like that that vent and uh Michael Myers kinda just looks in and then she just falls down the vent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I think that was in Halloween five also, I would all I would always remember the scene when he, she was at his house. Oh, and then Doctor Loomis is fighting him. Yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, with the he was with the cinder. What what the fuck was it? Two by four. Two by four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, Doctor Loomis is like, yeah, yeah, and she's just like cowering in fear. Like, ah. But but uh, no no, and like he took off his mask, and that was the first time he took off. His wasn't mask. he like partially burned or something? Cause... They didn't show his face, <sighs> but yeah. I think he had, like, some of burn. Yeah, because of Halloween 2, the hospital exploded. Yeah. But, um, she, she's kind of one of those, like, actors that looks the same from when they were a kid. She does look the same. Yeah, she still has the she same face older. and everything. Yeah. And well, older. obviously. But still, it still feels a little weird, because I, like, I just always, I, I, I hear Daniel Harris and I picture a little kid, and I'm just like, that's, this feels, I feel like... I don't know, I don't see her like that, because I remember that when I was a kid, she was a kid, well... When I watched it, she was a kid. She was probably was like a, a teenager, or like. In the in Halloween, you think she was a teenager? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm saying goodness. like when we watched it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah when yeah, we were yeah. kids, like she her was age, probably maybe. A, yeah, a teenager. Yeah, maybe like her mid to late teens, or maybe even. No, I don't think she's that old. She has to be in like her early thirties, if anything. <clears throat> yeah. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard, I don't know if it was this past year or last year, she did like one of her last horror conventions, so I don't know if she's going to be doing any more horror conventions. Oh, really? Which is kind of whack, because like, she was... she's kind of like the, one of those main drawers. Yeah. Like, like, they get like Kane Hodder, who who, uh, who actually played Victor Crowley, and he's played like previous oh, incarnations of Jason. Yeah, and then like, uh, this. Linda Blair with like the Exorcist. Yeah, or something movie. like that. Like all those like famous horror movie icons and like Derek Mears or whatever. Yeah. Um, That's kind of sad. Yeah, she's one of those. Yeah, like those top draws. But um, if if uh, I might be mistaken, maybe she decided to, you know, come back and do horror conventions. But from what I heard, I think she did like do one of her like last ones not too long ago. Maybe she's pregnant. <sighs> That'll make me sad. Oh, to me heal. Yeah. But anyway, Victor Crowley versus Michael Myers. Victor Crowley versus Kratos. <laughs> Victor Crowley versus John Cena. <laughs> John Cena wins. Of course, kicks out of two. <laughs> Victor Victor Crowley versus Michael Jackson. Who looks weirder, match? <laughs> anyway, go watch Hatchet Three. It's on Netflix. Yeah. You gotta check it out, it's pretty good. Or just buy it. Um, check out the other two as well. I don't know if they're on Netflix. I know one and three are, two I don't think it is. One's on Netflix? Oh, okay, I didn't know that, I'll have to watch it. Two is. Um, let us know down in the comment section below if you have seen a movie and tell us what you think about it. Like this video so we can know that you appreciate what we're doing and subscribe so you can get more awesome videos like this, movie reviews and fan films and original films that we do. Um, any parting words? This is not a review. No, it's this just... Discussion. Straight up discussion and chat. So feel free to discuss and chat down in the comment section. Ah! Uh, see you later.